Hey everyone, it's Maggie Bot here with Vlogist Day 11. And a couple hours ago, they announced the nominations for the International Gamer Awards, which is a big, uh, a little bit of everything um, award that they do with people from around the world. And it's a really interesting group of games. Um, you wouldn't really put them all together in a different list. And it's nowhere near what the spiel does. And it's not certainly not like the Portuguese game of the year that I, I follow pretty closely. So I figured I would just go through the strategy game nominations and tell you my thoughts. It's Vlogist, well, right? Um, so first up was Aquasphere, and that is the Stefan Feld game from Hall Games and Tasty Menstrual Games. And Aquasphere is two to four players. Um, it's a lot of kind of putting forth a plan in motion and trying to figure out the very small little actions that will get you what you want. Um, it happens to be a game I'm really bad at. So I just, I don't think I've ever even won that game. But it's very fun and innovative. Um, you either do a main action on the big board with all the other players, or you take a minor programming action. Um, next was Marco Polo. Um, out here in the States, that was Z-Man Games. Uh, Marco Polo is a dice placement game a la Alien Frontiers, where you roll your dice at the beginning of a round, and um, based on where you place them, you take different actions, and um, if they're pairs, or if they're high, or if they're low, they give you different levels of each action. My main issue with Marco Polo, and I played it just only twice, so ooh, a grain of salt, um, I didn't quite like the player powers. Uh, they were meant to be very strong, and um, I felt they were straight swingy, and they took away a lot of the strategy in the game by letting you ignore a rule or a principle in there. Um, the next one was Deus, and that was from Pearl Games. Um, I should have written down the name of the, the game makers. I'm hoping I remember them all. Uh, Deus is um, similar to a Imperial Settlers, where it's a card combo game. But in Deus, you are trying to take over area, so using area control with a very crazy swingy card system. Uh, this one was kind of middle of the road for me. I had a copy. I traded it away. I hope whomever got it loves it. Um, and next is its partner in crime, Elysium. And unfortunately, I think Deus and Elysium had similar styling, similar marketing, and they came out at the same time. So it was either one or the other for most people. And Elysium was the Space Cowboys again, um, so they were coming off of Splendor, and then that, that's what they went to. Um, between the two, I preferred Deus. I thought it was a little closer to perfect for me. But Elysium had this central mechanic of how you paid for cards. You're, you're looking at a board full of cards, and how you pay for them is by spending colored columns. And... You could spend any color you liked, but in order to purchase the card, if it had a blue cost, you had to have the blue pillar left over. So it was a lot of planning before you get to things on uh, what you wanted and how you were going to get it. Um, next was Five Tribes, and that was uh, Days of Wonder out here in the States. Uh, and that was a Bruno game, um, which had this neat little, almost Moncala style um, action selection where you pick up a group of camels and you kind of, or guys, meeples, and you drop one off per square until you run out of meeples and wherever you land is what action you take and you had to land in a square with the same color as the thing you landed in and really, really cool stuff. The game itself is very, very fun. However, you can spend a half hour in between turns. You can spend as much time as someone wants to make you spend. And it's hard to keep a cohesive strategy put together when someone is making you, is taking so long that you can't actually focus that long. That might just be my personal problem, but after a half hour, I've probably checked Twitter and Facebook and updated a thing and read a BGG article. So it's a little hard to have one central strategy. Uh, next was Hyperborea, and Hyperborea is a fabulous game. 
I cannot remember the game makers because they are not ones I know off the top of my head. Um, but it goes from like, it, it's a ridiculous player count. It's like two to six. But it is best at four. It has a really neat bag building, cube building strategy section, as well as some area control. In fact, the bag building, cube building part of it is almost identical to Orleans. Uh, which is also on this list. Uh, so you pull cubes out of a bag and you apply them to actions, and once the action is filled up, you expend those cubes and take the action. And there's slightly different rules in both games, but uh, very, very fun to try and make sure you have the right number of cubes in your bag, because Hyperborea really, really punishes you for not having uh, three left in your bag. If you have one, you miss two cubes that round. Uh, Hyperborea, unfortunately... Um, is completely unbalanced if you use the player powers, which uh, we were all excited to try, and so the game is very good without them. And the blue deck, compared to the other two decks, is much, much stronger. Next is Croftwagon, and that is from Uli, and I can't remember his game company, and Matthias Kramer. Uh, Craft Wagon is a fabulous little game with a very unique action selection rondelle, and uh, you are trying to sell cars to customers and race them sometimes, um, and the, the players get to put the customers out in a specific order, they're looking for different things, and you put out your cars, and if your price and your features match up, the customer will buy your car, and it's a very cool, very short, short game. I really would have loved that game with another something and a couple more rounds added on, but it is a really cool game. Um, Le Grand Ha. So this is a Spielworks game that uh, uh, Stronghold Games actually just brought to the States, and it is a Feld plus Rosenberg monstrosity baby. Um, it is very cool. You have a central mechanic that's very, very similar to Luna, uh, the market stalls. Uh, you try and kick people out, and you get points for kicking people out of the market stalls. Um, but the main feature of the game is being able to use each type of card as four different types of a card. So you can either build it on as a field, or a pig pin, or uh, Wayne writes, or I can't remember all the words, um, but there's a contract at the top, or a power at the bottom, or a feel, or something. Very, very cool. Now, Orleans, I mentioned slightly before, uh, has a bag building mechanism, kind of like Hyperborea. Uh, Orleans was originally DLP Games, which is Rainier and his uh, wife, and uh, those Lucky Ducks, Tasty Minstrel. Uh, Russell the Wrangled, a way of getting that to the States for all of us here, and they're doing a deluxe version for the winter. And Orleans has some really cool strategies and lots of different paths to victory, but I've only played one time, so I can't speak much to it other than saying I wanted to try lots of different things. So every time you pull cubes out of your bag, you're trying to apply them to actions, and when you're ready, you spend those actions to do other things. And then we have another stronghold. We have uh, Panamax, and Panamax was a very cool, interesting four-player game. I'm surprised they would write it on the box as lower than four players, because what you really needed were people that needed to get across the board, because you were loading things onto ships and trying to get your ships through the canals, but if someone else wanted to come from behind, they'd have to push your ship along through the canal um, and only help you a little bit. But th that's the only way to get through. The canals are very narrow, so only one kind of lane can go through at a time. Very cool, interesting game. The only downside I've had was uh, I've had a couple bad games where the contracts come out uh, in an uneven manner. And you get all your ships stuck to one side of the board or another, and it just not as fun. Uh, Quartermaster General from, I think this is Griglin Games? Uh, Quartermaster General was one I was asked to play last Gen Con, and I failed at that. 
So um, I don't have much to say on the subject, but I have a hard time playing straight up board games. And I know it's supposed to be genius. My friend Erin at work love, love, loves it. Um, I know they had a, an expansion um, at this Gen Con that supposedly helped at different player counts. And so I look forward to maybe someday trying it out. Uh, we'll see if a friend of mine that likes it wants to show it to me because that's really important with games where the theme maybe turns you off a little bit is just to have someone with some enthusiasm try and suck you into it. And uh, last but not least uh, was Roll for the Galaxy, which is Race for the Galaxy, but with dice. And as someone who's played a lot of Race for the Galaxy in their lives, I can't play a role. Sorry. Um, it just, I tried it, let's see, three times. And each time I just kind of wish I had the cards. Uh, the, the dice rolling is very fun. You do it kind of simultaneously and you apply your dice to this little card. And you don't have to roll amazingly every time. You just need one die that you really need and a little bit of intuition on what other people are going to choose. But on, I, I don't even know where the comparison is in my head, but I'd rather play St. Petersburg any day than Roll for the Galaxy. <laughs> I, I, I put them in the same weight category, and St. Petersburg is just more fun. Um, so that is all of the strategy nominations. That's a lot of nominations. And I've got to say, this year had a very good crop, because none of these games were so bad where I was like, why are they even being nominated? All of these had cool things. Lots of people liked them. And if I had to pick one, it's not the Feld, sorry. If I had to pick one to win this category, something to represent my year in gaming and your year in gaming, you know, I'd probably go with LeGranha. And I'm not even fully sold on LeGranha, but I think it is so genius in the way that it's put together that it's a great, great game, and it deserves some recognition for that. Um, now, the quickest thing in the world, I'll go through the two-player nominations. It was Baseball Highlights. Fields of Arla, Patchwork, Star Realms, Star Wars Armada, and Virsen das Volk. And with the exception of Virsen das Volk, I have played all of these, um, and I will give my nod to Fields of Arla, which is probably the heaviest game on this list, other than Virsen das Volk. But um, it's just a, a stroke of genius on Juve Rosenberg's, uh, Rosenberg's part. It, it's just so smart. But if you're going to go with just straight up fun factor, Patchwork was really, really fun. I win so many buttons. So many buttons. All right, everyone. Uh, this was the International Gamer Award nominations. Uh, it was a very long vlog, so I apologize. But I will be back here tomorrow to chat with you all. And hopefully I have something a little longer form. I've got two videos to record tomorrow because of Blender. So maybe it will be shorter after all. Uh, it's good to see you all, and I'll see you all tomorrow.